Okay, we're ready. <coughs> Wait a minute, honey. Okay. okay, we're ready. Let's get back to the class. Okay, ready? All right, you know, one thing I wanted to do, Elena, was to do you mind if we take a picture, a photo, photo of everybody? Um, um, yeah, I wish I had some one more person. I put Elena in the room and we'd do it together. But um, now, by the way, this is going to be applicable to your chart particularly, okay? Because it's important you know that a grant trying to be truly effective. Excuse me, are we on, Elena? Are you ready? Okay, I guess we're on. Listen to me. Okay, turn around. Okay. Okay. Now, listen to me. I was mentioning that a grand trine. Um, the grand trine is really powerful. Um, it, it shows an integration of the forces of those planets in your life that you've incarnated with. It means you, very often I see the grand trine as, a, as, a, as, a, as somebody that's walked this planet in a past life is, a, is probably a master or a teacher in some particular arena. It depends on the planets, okay? Could be a Saturn Mars grand trine, which is probably a, a, somebody that's worked hard in their life in a past life and built things, Mars and Saturn's construction, and, but they have a lot of knowledge in that arena. Um, you know, Mars, Saturn energies are, we always talk about them kind of negatively, but the building, the fundamental building block of all things is Saturn. You know, it's the rock upon which the temple's built, if you would. Okay, it also refers to the body. The rock is right here, okay? Okay, we use the word, I won't go there again, but anyway, <laughs> so, so. That is all Saturn stuff, you know what I mean? So, you know, there, there's so much, there's double and tender in these words and these knowledge and the scriptures. So, so, but the grand trying to be truly effective and not inert. Inert meaning not that they're just lazy. I've seen good people with good charts with grand trines that are la absolutely lazy. They've been given everything all their life. They're from a family that just kind of takes care of them. And they just don't have any initiative. They don't have any desire to, because it's been too easy. And a grand trine can happen like that. And so, okay, and there needs to be something or stress aspect to one of the three planets involved. That energizes, it gives it some energy. That's one more thing I want to teach you guys. I talk a lot about the negative meanings of these crosses, the squares and the oppositions, and it sounds like, oh my God, I got that in my chart, I got this in my chart. I wish I had never looked at my chart, right? I wish I didn't know this, <laughs> right? But, but, let me just tell you something. The strongest people are those with the crosses. They're either overwhelmed by them or they become very strong. And it builds strength, okay? So these crosses, these, these aspects of square and opposition galvanize you to action. They don't let you rest. They're always driving you. And do you remember, um, we were talking about uh, the Saturn and Jupiter afflictions and I was talking about how it can be a manic depressive. That we, we got into that on the online on the uh, meetup site and uh, uh, it, it challenged somebody in here because I'm not manic depressive, you know? I love you, but it's that, that energy's there. Doesn't necessarily mean that the worst meaning of it's there. All I need to know though about it is that, 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 that the, the, there's extreme fluctuations of the moods with Saturn and Jupiter. Jupiter is very optimistic, positive. Everything's gonna come up roses. Saturn is pessimism, oh, you know? I, nothing works out for me, you know. I'm no good. I'm, you know, you know all the negative stuff, self, self, uh, abligation. I, what's the word? I'm not. What is the word? Help me. Yeah, you know, it is that. It's like the, I'm not worthy. I don't deserve a good life. I don't deserve. That's Saturn talking. Jupiter's. I am God. You see? You know what I mean? I can do anything. You know? It's like in the Bible. It talks about the Son of Man and the Son of God. Sometimes I'm both, sometimes you're both. Sometimes we're, we're, the, we're the son of man and we're suffering and other times we're the son of God and nothing stops us. So I see our lives that way, okay? I, I'm very much archetypal type of interpreter of astrology and that's how I see it. Now, the reason I bring that Jupiter-Saturn up again, why did I? Give me another of those pills, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was going somewhere real important. <laughs> it seemed important at the time. Gosh, my gosh. Jupiter. Whoa, whoa, I know. No, no, I was going to. I, I love people sometimes their quotes, and I've used some of them because they ring bell with me. They kind of. And the one was by Thoreau. Was it Thoreau that I quoted on the meetup site? 
uh, who said, uh, most men live lives of quiet desperation. And so I've used that quote a lot because I find that's true, quiet desperation. There, a lot of people go through life with desperation, struggling internally. Nobody knows it out here because they put a good face on it. But most men live lives of quiet desperation. So what did I do? I thought, geez, well, how come I've never done Thoreau's chart? I draw up this chart because I'm thinking it's got to be Jupiter Saturn affliction. Exact square between Jupiter and Saturn. That's how amazing this stuff is. You know what I mean? What's the odds? You know what I mean? It's really amazing. In the advanced classes, I do a lot of charts of people that have had a big traumatic things, sometimes death because it's very a very marked event. It's easy to use, you know. Whether it's Robin Williams or whether it's uh, uh, Joan Rivers, we do, we do those charts in my advanced classes because I teach you how to predict things. And I can show you how accurate it is. And, and, and you know that if you've been in my class before, that these can't be coincidences because I repeat them over and over and over again. And I have a technique that I teach, it's called the cosmic key of, of uh, the cosmic key to prediction. And it's so accurate, it's scary. Uh, if, if the if astrological world knew what I knew, and this sounds like uh, my ego talking, but if they knew what I knew, they'd knock my door down to get in here and learn, if they really knew. If they knew what I, technique I've got. I've only taught it to two classes. I taught it to one in Boston, and I taught it to one here. And uh, you can't deny it. You can't deny it. Um, is, it is it a separate class, or it's just Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's because it takes a bit of really learning. But once you learn it, you will be, you will astound yourself with what you can do. And again, I mean, I've had uh, Reverend um, um, Sherry. Sherry, who is a minister, and she's an astrologer. She's taken several of my classes. She keeps coming back for more. And uh, her son had died. And um, before he died, you know, I used to, she'd come for readings from me. And uh, the one reading she came to me the last time, I couldn't hardly read her chart because I saw stuff like that. And so I just kind of pushed her out and said, you know, she knew I knew something, but I didn't want to talk to her. But her son, how old was he? Beautiful kid. He, um, 27, 28? 47. 47? And he was a, he was a body built trainer, a physical trainer, beautiful body, beautiful body, he, handsome guy. And... Um, but he, uh, he passed and we went to his funeral. He, uh, but his chart spoke all of it, told it so clearly. And um, it's hard for her because she knows the language. She's an astrologer, she knows it, understands it very well. But in these courses you'll learn that. If you, if, we stay, if you stay with me, you wanna go further, we'll do that. If you want advanced class, I'll teach it. Uh, it's too much at this time to do, give it to you in five weeks, let's face it. I'll, I try to give more than I take. And uh, I'll give you another class even if you guys want it. I, I want to hear it collectively though. Do you want, you want another week? Sure. Let me see the hands. Let's do. How many can't come for another week? I should ask it that way. Oh. You cannot come for another week, for another Saturday. You cannot come for another Saturday. On September 5th, I'm thinking Do you want to make it another week? Would you come then? Yeah. Would you? There may be two weeks. Is that enough? Yeah. How many weeks do you want? Oh, I am starting a new class on the 13th. 